In this lesson, we're going to talk about a general factoring strategy. Or in other words, when you see a factoring problem, how do you know how to approach it and what to try first? Because we've learned several different methods of factoring. We've talked about factoring out the greatest common factor and how to factor trinomials and how to factor by grouping and how to factor difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. So when you see a problem, how do you know of how to identify it so that you can apply the right method to it? Well, there are three steps, and here they are. Factor out the GCF if you have one. That should always come first. Every time you see a factoring problem, look for a common factor first and do that very first thing. Next, you're going to decide how to factor the, the terms in parentheses if you have a GCF based on the number of terms. If it's four terms, you're going to factor by grouping. If it's three terms, you're going to factor it into two binomials. If it's two terms, it has to either be a difference of squares or a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. Those are the only three methods we had that would uh, work on two-term problems. And then your third step is to check for factors that can be factored again. We saw just a little bit of that when we did difference of squares and we had you remember x to the fourth problems where after we factored it there was another difference of squares. So look for things that have another factoring step after you do uh, step two here. And the best thing to do is just to try some examples and work on them together. So let's factor these completely. Here I've got 21x squared minus 35x. So remember, step one is to factor out the common factor, the greatest common factor. And I do see here that both of these can be divided by 7, and they both contain a factor of x. So let's factor out that 7x. So 7x times 3x gives us 21x squared, and 7x times 5 gives us 35x. So now I'm going to look at my two terms inside the parentheses and see if they can be factored more. Of course, my only choices are difference of squares, and clearly this is not a difference of squares. Difference of cubes or sum of cubes, and clearly this is not a difference or sum of cubes either. So there is no factoring that can be done on this, therefore this problem is finished. Let's look at part B. 5x squared minus 5x minus 30. So I do see here a common factor of 5. And if I factor out the 5 inside the parentheses, I'll have x squared minus x minus 6. And now this is a trinomial, so I need to try to break this trinomial down into two binomials. Notice keeping the GCF here. So x squared is first times first. That's going to be x times x. The signs need to be different. And I need a last times last that will make 6, but at the same time I need outer plus inner to add up to negative 1. So I'm going to choose 3 times 2 for 6, and I'm going to put the 3 with the minus sign. All right, now if you check outer plus inner, 2x minus 3x does add up to negative 1x. So that's the correct factoring. And before we go on to the next one, just notice that both of these factors um, are linear, so neither one of them can be factored again. Okay, on to part C. I, I have four terms here and no common factor for all four terms. So my best bet here is the grouping method. If I look at the first two terms, I can factor out a y squared. And if I look at the last two terms, I can factor out a 4, but it needs to be a minus 4. So remember that this was y, negative 4 times y makes negative 4y, but negative 4 times positive 2 is what we need to get that minus 8 there. Now both parentheses are the same, so they both have a y plus 2. And in parentheses behind, I'll have y squared minus 4. 
Now look at both terms, or both factors rather, and see if anything can be factored again. Clearly this one cannot. It's not a difference of squares or a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes, but this one is a difference of squares. So I'll need to keep my y plus 2, but I'll need to break this factor down into its two binomials. So y squared is y times y, and then minus 4 is going to be minus 2 times positive 2. And so these two binomials together make up y squared minus 4, and these are the three factors. If you multiply these two back together, and then multiply that answer times y plus 2, you'll get these four terms back if you wanted to check. Okay, one more here. Let's look at uh, 9x squared plus 15x plus 6. And I see that 3 will go into all three terms. And that will leave us 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now I'm, I'm going to try to factor this, bi this trinomial into two binomials. So first times first has to be 3x squared. That's going to be 3x times 1x. The signs need to be the same, and they both need to be positive. And last times last needs to be uh, 2. So that's got to be 2 times 1. But the question is, does the, does the 2 go here or here? So I'm going to put it here. And now I'm going to check outer plus inner. Outer times outer is 3x. Inner times inner is 2x. 3x plus 2x is 5x. So this factoring is correct. And neither of these factors can be factored anymore, so this problem is finished as well. Now a few more examples together. Let's factor x squared minus 25x. Well, the first thing I hope you see here is that uh, there's a common factor of x. So let's factor that out. And that leaves us with x minus 25 in the parentheses. See, x times x is x squared, and x times 25 is 25x. So in the parentheses now, do we have a difference of squares? And the answer is no, because this is not a squared term. And do we have a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes? And the answer is certainly no, because neither of these is a cube. So there's nothing else we can do to that one. Let's factor y to the fifth minus 81y. Well, I hope you notice that they both have a, a y factor. So let's factor out the y. And that will leave us with y to the fourth minus 81. Okay, now this is a difference of squares because y to the fourth is y squared times y squared, and 81 is 9 times 9. So if I factor this difference of squares, we'll get y minus 9 times y plus 9. Okay, now look at all of our factors and see if we have another difference of squares. And we do here. This is another difference of squares. So I'm going to keep my y. And I'm going to factor y squared minus 9 into y minus 3 times y plus 3. And then this y squared plus 9 is what we call a sum of cubes. It's not a difference. So it cannot be factored. And we just have to keep y squared plus 9. And here is a four-term problem. x to the third plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. Um, there's no GCF for all four terms, but it is a four-term problem, so we know that we need to use the grouping method on it. The first two terms, uh, we can factor out a GCF of x squared. And in parentheses, that would leave x plus 2. For the last two terms, I can factor out a GCF of negative 1 because they really don't have anything in common, but I do have a minus sign here. So I'll have to have a minus, have a 1 there. Now, negative 1 times x gives us negative x, and negative 1 times 2 gives us minus 2. Now they both contain an x plus 2, and in parentheses we'll have x squared minus 1. Now before you go into the next problem, look at your factors, and this one is a difference of squares. 
So this one is not, so it will stay the same. But the x squared minus 1 needs to factor into x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, and last on this page, 21x squared minus 25x minus 4. I do not see a GCF here, so there won't be anything in front of the parentheses. But it's a trinomial, so we should try to make two binomials out of it. Now, I have 7x times 3x for my 21x squared. This tells me that the signs should be the same. I'm sorry, should be different. If it's a minus, they should be different. So I'm going to put down a minus and a plus. Now the 4 could either be 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. Let's try 2 times 2. And let's see now if the outer plus inner adds up the way we want it. Outer times outer is going to be 14x. Inner times inner is going to be minus 6x. 14 minus 6 is certainly not negative 25. So let's try rearranging the... Well, no, we can't rearrange them, can we? Because they were both 2's. So if we rearrange them, it looks the same. Let's try 4 and 1. And I've got my 4 here on the outside. So let's try outer times outer now. So 7x times 4x is 28x. Inner times inner is minus 3x. That's going to make positive 25x. But um, notice that we wanted minus 25x. So let's change the signs the other way around. And what that does is it gives us outer times outer now is negative 28x. Inner times inner is positive 3x. Negative 28 plus 3 is negative 25, which is what we wanted. So this is the correct factoring for part D.